welcome to this video. Welcome. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome back. If you have, I'm doing something a little different today. I'm trying to untangle myself from a microphone and um, I'm not used to using this microphone. So I'm going to uh, speak a little softer. Hopefully the sound quality will be better on this video. Uh, eventually I'll get used to it, so thank you for your patience. My intention with all of these videos is to assist in raising the frequency and the vibration with one another and on Mother Earth, of course, and to raise our awareness around ascension. So the purpose for the microphone is really so I can get used to it. I'm planning on doing podcasts as soon as I can figure out how. <laughs> A little more complicated than I thought, or maybe it's simpler than I realized, but I figured the first step would be in purchasing a microphone. Although I have a feeling this won't be the end all device, but it's just a step in the right direction. So I have a tendency to get downloads and activations while I move, while I walk. It's almost like a walking meditation. So that's where I get a lot of the information that I share with you guys. And so I record many, many, many recordings as I get this information that comes in. And I've been guided to start just downloading these recordings and then just sharing them as a podcast. So something to um, maybe look for in the future. I've also been updating my blog. So I'll invite you to check that out if you're interested in more of a reading than a listening. Um, but without further ado, my inten uh, intention with this particular video is to focus on the energies that have been coming in that I've noticed over the course of the last weeks and to talk about some of the activations that have come in. So I just wanna back up and um, kind of just back up just for a little bit in case you have watched these videos before. Some of you might have been noticing I've been doing more out uh, outside light language videos and not as long uh, light language videos. This particular video is not a light language video. It's a kiss, keep it simple, star seeds kind of format where it's more informative and a simplified version of the energies I've been feeling rather than going into the light language expression. Um, I've been guided to share a lot more uh, teaching than just the light language. So my intention will be to talk, um, I'll be doing a video just about light language a couple of things I found really fascinating. I've had some amazing sessions with some beautiful star seeds and light workers over the course of the past week. Uh, yeah, about the last week. I've taken a few weeks off and I've started to kind of come back into session work. And what I'm finding is oftentimes we give ourselves a lot of pressure or we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to figure out what is happening, what downloads we're getting. In addition to that, we I find that many of us are recognizing that we're here to do more. But what I wanted to share with the energies that are coming in is obviously what we resist will persist. So part of what this these activations, these portals, these eclipses, these um, downloads, these sharings are all about are hitting the refresh button. So what I've been feeling and what I've been seeing with people that I've been working with is it's sometimes just time to take a nice refresh. Literally get out into nature, get away from it all. Don't worry about what you need to do with this information it will come. Oftentimes we start speaking light language or we start writing all of this channeled information, which might just be coming from our higher selves, although it could be coming from our other guidance helpers. And we feel the need to get out and share it with the world. Yet that can sometimes feel overwhelming. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, I felt that way when all of this started to come to me as well. It took me approximately a year um, with many years of practice in the sense of teaching yoga, meditation, ascension symptoms, et cetera, et cetera, for me to feel somewhat comfortable with even presenting these energies on YouTube, which was my first place to, show, to share all of this, even though I had been recording it and writing it down for a very long time. And even when I first put this onto 
the internet. I still wasn't 100% comfortable with it. And it's still strange to me, in essence, sometimes when I really sit back and look at what it is that I'm doing, especially when I come across other people, beings, who are not familiar with light language, ascension, or any of it. And I'm reminded how uh, not everybody is in the same space, right? Not everybody's operating from the same dimension or the same understanding of how things work. And it's all good. But my point in sharing this with you is if I can invite you, based on what I've been feeling in the last two weeks, it's all about all of these downloads and activations coming in, just allowing them, being present with them, allowing the body to feel electrified and not necessarily having to do something about it. And what I mean by that is not necessarily having to make that step into the spotlight or the limelight as a teacher or a healer if you don't feel ready. So there's this stirring or undercurrent, and we all get this sense of a bigger calling. But what happens is, is if we aren't grounded, and I'm gonna take that a step further, and even more importantly, if we aren't anchoring the activations that we are receiving into our bodies, into our now moment, and into our step-by-step breathing in and breathing out, it is not necessarily the right time for us to be sharing this with other beings because it can create a feeling of not only disharmony, but schism, so to speak. And I use that word because we are multidimensional beings. And one of the things we came here to do, from my perspective, is to anchor that multidimensionality in a working way. And as we all know, if we have too much going on, we're here, we're there, we're here, we're there, and we're multitasking so much that we aren't coming back to ourselves and anchoring in who we really are, then we lose energy, we feel pulled in different directions, we feel high one minute and very low the next. Part of what we are experiencing or learning to create is mastery or remembering we are the masters of our field, matrix, emotions, etc. So when these portals, gateways, DNA activations, downloads, upgrades, eclipses, new moons, full moons all happen, some of those senses can be heightened and we can feel, ah, what do I do with this? I have to share it with everybody, but oh no, that's too stressful. What am I going to do? I'm not doing the right thing. I haven't been. And so I just wanted to share with you guys that that's a very normal feeling. And I've been seeing that with, again, one-on-one -on -one work with clients, emails that I've been getting, um, et cetera, et cetera. I feel it too. It happens. And so one thing that I learned in the past two weeks or was reminded of is to take it down a notch, hit that reset button, and do what we need to do to unplug from everything because everything is kind of coming at us and our senses are activating to a certain extent that it, it feels different. And we're learning how to essentially traverse through this new multidimensionality that we are now more aware of, I guess is the best way to describe it. So having said that, I had to unplug, pull away, connect with my family, connect with my husband, and um, we're all being invited to be more present in that now moment to moment to moment, connecting with everyone in such a way that it allows us to stabilize because uh, stabilization is important. Uh, otherwise, again, we're pulled apart in many different directions. So that was one thing that came through in the last couple of weeks. 
Um, and while those energies are perhaps stabilizing a little bit for some, we're not all in the same cycle. So for others, it might just be just beginning. It might come in waves. Uh, and doing what we need to do in order to anchor water, running water in any form, outside barefoot in the sand, uh, eating very wholesome, earthy foods can be a good way of grounding. I could go on and on. And, and that's another video. I think I did a video on anchoring and grounding. The other um, message that came through was, well, I'll get to that in just a moment because I've got Ruby written up here. So I have so much to share and I'm trying to keep it somewhat linear. Um, there's still a lot of activations and downloads coming in. We had the eclipse, the new moon, and the full moon. I just wanted to clarify for myself, again, refresh button. I keep getting messages about it's a renewal, it's a cleansing, but it's also a creative uh, aspect. So while I say it's not necessary to go out and share with the world, the light language that you're just beginning to speak or the new artwork that you're just doing, if you feel inspired to do so, then by all means, we are being encouraged to share. But not if it makes us feel nervous, scared, or too much pressure. There's always a small aspect of fear uh, when we first start doing this. Uh, based on worrying about judgment, will we be judged, how will we be viewed. Sometimes it's that feeling of, am I really getting messages from my higher self? Who are these messages coming from? I'm doing a separate video on that, which will be on light language, um, and so on and so forth. But what I mean is being open to those messages that you're receiving, being open to all of that is wonderful. But we're being invited to relax, to allow ourselves to get the downloads. We're receiving the upgrades. We're receiving the downloads. If we come into a space of, oh no, what am I supposed to do with them? It can block that receptivity, if that makes sense. So sometimes it's just about allowing them to come through, do your artwork, speak your light language, do whatever you feel guided to do, dance, move, cook. And then once everything has had a little bit of time, so to speak, to acclimate or things have integrated and you can come from a new refreshed, renewed perspective, perhaps then you'll feel more comfortable in sharing those aspects with the world if you choose to. And the other message I wanted to go into about that is if you do not want to share it, it might just be for you. And that's okay too. So sometimes as star seeds and light workers, we feel that we are here to heal one another and the earth and ourselves. And while uh, from one perspective, that may be true or there may be truth to that, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is what we have to do in the traditional sense. I worked with a beautiful star seed this week who said, you know, Carrie, we've been working together for quite some time and, and she's just lovely. So thank you, Lynn. And she said, um, you know, I always thought I wanted to be a healer and I do. And she said, I kept, I was told that I was supposed to be a teacher and I did not want to be a teacher. And then she said, now she's recognizing that she might want to be more of a teacher than a healer. And what I shared in all of this with our co-creative session work is that it's the same thing. So I wanted to kind of bring that to our awareness that, um, let's see where I'm gonna put that in here. Teaching is healing. There are different forms of what we feel healing is. So when you think of teaching as healing, which many of you already know this, but my messy writing. 
what happens is we have a tendency to think in order to be a healer, we have to get out there and do Reiki, or we have to speak light language, or we have to go into a specific type of healing modality. And we put this pressure on ourselves to see auras and to feel energy and to understand or channel, whatever it might be. And again, that can block the energies and activations that are coming through. We all are healers and we all can be teachers in our own way. And by teaching others, by being the example or leading by example or teaching others by expressing ourself in a loving, um, uh, creative way, that is a form of healing what is around us. It's sharing that energy and vibration with one another. So I wanted to share that because I've had multiple sessions now where that thread has been coming through. And it's that message that you're already healing. You're already healing others. You're, you're already teaching by leading by example. So we're being invited to just take the pressure off. Don't feel like you have to go out there and create a website and create this and create that right this moment. Maybe you do because that's what you're being guided to do. But if it feels like you're doing it because you feel like you have to do it and then you feel stressed out about it or anxious or a little bit of anxiety because of it, that's when you know it's time to take a step back and maybe try a different direction first and then see if it leads back to you opening yourself as a healing practitioner. And um, also recognizing, again, that this can come in many forms. It does not have to come in the form of um, traditional, you know, laying of hands or energy work or whatever it might be. It could be something as simple as having a conversation or starting a book reading club for your neighbors and just talking and sharing your vibrational frequency to then be comfortable and become comfortable in that newfound identification that you may be identifying with now as a healer. So I just wanted to share that from one aspect. So that was one of the messages that had come through over the last couple of the week, uh, weeks for me, uh, as well as other, other people. Now I kept this uh, grid up here because I was getting a lot of messages about tying in with Mother Earth. Um, I'm getting goosebumps. I love it when that happens, right? A little uh, push saying, yes, keep it going. So remembering as above, so below. So as we fall into this, um, and when I say fall into, I get this feeling of just like not falling. It's like falling in love. When you're falling in love, it's just this feeling of excitement and um, wonder and having fun and playfulness. And that's kind of where we're being invited to stay in that frequency. I just posted an Instagram um, excerpt this morning. So I do some Instagram posts that are shorter than my blog posts. Then I later on put those on my blog and then I usually will add to them. So if you're interested in just a short activation, you can go to keep it simple star seeds um, on Instagram. But the reason I'm sharing this is because the message that came through was we are going through a divine feminine marriage, divine masculine marriage, as well as this reunification with our childhood, uh, not necessarily our childhood, but our inner child. So that divine trinity in one source um, unification is part of what is happening. So I was seeing uh, several weeks ago this folding of energies, and I was kind of seeing like a toroidal donut, um, which we'll get into in just a moment, architecture with uh, a crystalline structure. So it was almost like the, there were these separations and that they were folding in and twisting in on themselves to then create new patterns. And so it's this marriage. I was seeing the flower of life, which if you guys aren't familiar with that shape, um, it looks a little bit like that. 
And you can, of course, Google what that looks like and um, seed of life, excuse me, which then becomes the flower of life, etc., etc. So this divine marriage of the masculine of and feminine and the inner child coming together to then merge with our oversoul or higher selves or whatever you uh, resonate with is, is basically what I'm what I've been feeling and seeing. Uh, for myself, the message was get out in nature, get in the sun. Um, it creates a harmonic balance and, and exchange that then allows us to relax. Um, because otherwise, what happens is we get into this space of, I need to create, I need to do my next, and, um, other, the other thing is oftentimes they're, they're kind of guiding me to remind everybody when we're in this, uh, when we're healers and light workers, oftentimes we do a lot of looking up things on the internet. What's going on with the energies? What's going on with the ascension symptoms? And while I am very grateful for everybody that shares this video and shares this now moment with myself and with one another, I also recognize the fact that there will be people who need a break from these videos sometimes because they may not resonate with them in that moment or it's that they need to go within and find their own harmonic and see what they are guided to feel rather than listening to what somebody else is telling us is going on. So what I mean by that is I too find myself getting caught up in the whirlwind of ascension symptoms or what's going on with the earthquakes or what's going on with the harmonics. And the biggest message that came through for me, even though I will be explaining what I was seeing from my perspective in this video, was to stop, take a deep breath in, and go within. And allow those messages to be your own form of communication, be your own formation, instead of relying on someone else's information to come through. Because we are all getting our own, I don't know if the right word is definition, but we're being invited not to let the information define who we are because everybody's different. Even though we are all part of the source one uniqueness, again, not allowing or not forgetting that that uniqueness is part of us, right? So, um, some of the things I was feeling was, of course, the electrical ascension symptoms, the just feeling of electrical throughout the whole body. It's like your uh, the whole right side of my body. I'm going to pause this just for a moment. I love having this pause button. So, one of the messages um, I just wanted to mention before I forgot also was resoluteness. Um, I had been going through my own activations. And when these, let's say, ascension symptoms come on, they can make us feel very tired. They can make us feel very energized. One of the messages was to allow ourselves to just flow into that, not reacting highs and lows. If you feel like sleeping, sleep. If you feel like running, run. If you feel like dancing, dance. Um, oftentimes these ascension symptoms come through and it can leave us feeling a little anxious. And sometimes we misinterpret that as anxiousness, like we should be doing something bigger, more expansive, better than what we're doing now. And realistically, that is sometimes like the ego being stretched and we are going through these things. It causes a flight or fight response sometimes the cortisol in our body can go up and then our whole body is in that flight mode. And so it's just recognizing those things to kind of bring it back down and to allow all of these new activations to integrate um, and then moving from that space, uh, if that makes sense. So I had some highs and lows as well. The eclipse was very strong for, for myself, as it was, I think, for many people. And it caused me to be rethinking. Notice I said thinking. It really put me into my head about a lot of things that I was experiencing in my life. And 
it allowed me to hit the reset button on recognizing what it is that I um, associate myself with or what boundaries am I creating? Um, what, uh, where do I, who do I see myself as? And without overthinking it. So at one point I just thought, well, maybe I should just stop this all together and just take a break and go travel. And I'm sharing this because I love doing this. It, so deep down, I felt I couldn't do that. I love what I'm doing. But there was that moment of um, kind of sheer abandonment. Like I just wanted to play and this is playing for me, but it was almost like um, a sense of wanting to just run away from it all. How many of you guys have experienced that, right? And I got caught up in all these waves of energy and I thought, so in that moment, um, I pulled some cards and of course, and I'm sharing this because this is how synchronicity works. I went to Sedona. Um, my sister and I play with the, those machines just as for fun. Have you guys ever seen the movie Big? I'm sure you've, if you haven't, it's a great movie. And he plays with that machine, Zoltar or Zoltan, I can't remember. And that turns him into a, it, I won't, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but bottom line is you get a little fortune from it. And it's super silly. Well, in Sedona, they have Sedona Sam instead of Zoltar or Zoltan. And the card that comes out is your fortune. Now, of course, I think everything is synchronistic. And I just decided to get this. And my sister's card was completely different than mine was, yet exactly what she needed to hear, which is very ironic coming from a machine that you wouldn't think to put much faith into. But again, it's synchronicity. And when you pay attention to what the universe is offering you, that's when the meanings or the answers to your questions come through in a more precise and clear manner in the smallest of forms, even a silly little fortune cookie. Um, fortune or a card. Now mine had elephant on it, which was ironic considering Sedona Sam is a very kind of out west, you know, I could see me pulling the horse card if you know what I mean. But instead I pulled the elephant card, which is not a western card. Ironically, the next day I did my animal cards and of course pulled the elephant card, which is resolute steadfastness among many other things. And the underlying message was keep on doing what you're doing. Don't give up, among many other things. I just use that as a basic example because I'm trying to keep this simple. If you feel scattered, go back to the basics. I also started a vision board in the last two weeks. I haven't done one in years. So I invite you to do that. Briefly on the vision board, for me, it's more of a storytelling board versus a I want to have this, this, and that. And when I complete that vision board, I'll do a Keep It Simple Star Seed video on that. It was basic things, going back to the simple things, finding the inner child. I'll probably color a little bit over the next course of the next couple of days. I connected more with, again, friends and family. It's that divine marriage union of our brothers and sisters. Um, you know, if you're married or you have a spouse or a loved one, spending more time with them from the heart and not getting so wrapped up in work, projects, you know, the house, the responsibilities, kind of carving away that little time for you to not only focus on the inner self, but also the outer world, which is a reflection of the inner world. So that was another message that came through. Oh, lots of fun stuff. Okay, so one of the other um, synchronicities that I had was downloads and activations from Centaurus. Um, did I write it? I wrote it and then erased it. Centaurus, I'm not going to go into much detail. So I'm sharing this as far as synchronicity goes. So if you have this extreme desire to learn more about the Pleiades or 
Arcturians or uh, Andromeda, or you're really drawn to the ancestors of the earth or the Aborigines or etc. Generally speaking, it can be one of many things or it can be many things. It can be that you are connecting with the multidimensional aspect of you that is in turn one of those versions of what I just listed. The other thought process is that you can be connecting with um, a past version of you that perhaps was centaurian of nature or aboriginal of nature. I guess it'd be more of a future version. I think you get what I'm saying though, which is, so both of those are very similar, right? It can also be a multidimensional aspect of you where it's a parallel reality that you are currently existing in or experiencing and you're very drawn to that because that is coming through during these um, equinoxes, astrological lineups, etc, etc. Another aspect is it could be that you are receiving activations from that particular um, DNA heritage. I'm using the Aboriginal as an example since I connect strongly with Aboriginal heritage um, and Native American, of course, among the many others. Um, it could be that you are connecting with, let's say, um, you're getting activations and downloads from your brothers and sisters that are helping you along, helping us along. It could be that the entire collective is receiving those activations and downloads. It could be that because we're lining up through these portals, and I like to think of the portals, um, I did this picture on um, Instagram. I was seeing a lot of doorways in the clouds, speaking of synchronicities. The everything talks to us. And so, and also I've seen the eye of Horus this morning, but that's a whole other, or the eye of Ra. I'm not sure I'll have to look that up. But I was seeing um, doorways. So if you think of it and you're going in one doorway through this other doorway, and you can think of these as portals, so to speak. And perhaps this is a, a wormhole. I'm using just that as an example. So it could be that those are lining up astrologically and you're feeling the energies. I'm using Centaurus as an example. Now I'm sharing this with you guys for many reasons so that you could go, some people go, oh my goodness, I was wondering why I was feeling this connection to Arcturians or Arcturus right now, et cetera, et cetera. It might be different for everyone. Um, I had been really drawn to Centaurus. And it was interesting to me because I am currently connecting messages I had been receiving over the course of the last two years. I wouldn't necessarily say making more sense of them, but they are starting to come together. And Centaurus was one of the many constellations that I had uh, written down in my notes. And here it was coming up again very strongly. So I went on the internet, um, which I hadn't done much of recently until the last couple of days, and was just really researching Centaurus. And I couldn't really find anything that really truly resonated with me. And then a suggestion came up on YouTube from um, Rion de Alexander. Okay, I think it's Rion de something, but it's Rion and Alexander, and they're part of the Galactic Team Light. Anyways, I'll provide this link to the Cosmic Surfer series that Rion just started doing. And I was very excited because literally the day before I had been seeing Centaurus and I wrote all these notes, wasn't resonating with it. The next day, he had just done a video on Centaurus. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> that is synchronicity. And so it could be that the downloads and activations were coming through for the collective, and he was guided to share the information about the Centaurians. As I was looking for this information, it came into my lap. And I'm using this as an example of many of the bubble charts that you may have seen me do in many of my previous videos, which I will be doing again. So if you're interested, I'll provide that link and you can learn more about the Centaurians. Um, 
what I want to go into right now, and I'm going to end on this note to try to keep this as short as possible, and I'll probably do part two of this now what I'm getting into. Um, right, I believe it's the night of the, e I'm sorry, I keep calling it the equinox, but the, um, not the solstice, not the equinox my brain it gets a little mushy sometimes which is really okay because multi-dimensionality isn't about staying in one straight line it's kind of going all over the place and i also wanted to point out that all of this is coming together so this portal to this portal it's like when the lion's gate portals line up from year to year to year it's all linking together so um, when we had the eclipse, um, I believe it was within a couple of days of the eclipse, um, I had gone into a meditative state and I saw myself traveling through this entire web-like network that was um, a red color. And it was different than what I'm used to traversing through. I generally see it as a blue web structure or aqua like structure um, sometimes with other colors but this was clearly ruby red and I had also dreamed about crystals um, I had a dream of um, a loved one who has passed on I dreamed of him twice and um, it was a very different dream it was very um, astral realm as if I was there with him and we were talking in a different place than what a typical dream would feel like. My point in sharing this is I feel that many people are experiencing these um, experiences, as well as what I brought up in a video several weeks ago about the faces that might come and go in your field of vision as you begin to fall asleep or in meditation. Um, and again, that might be for a different video. This is just the energies that I've been seeing over the course of the last several weeks. And what I see this web that I was traversing through at is as ruby fascia. Now I've been talking about this in several videos and I've also talked about the uh, ruby, all of the gemstones as sapphire, um, as sapphires, that's a different video, as uh, chakras that are becoming upgraded and, and changing and shifting and morphing. But we're going to touch briefly on the ruby fascia because, again, synchronistically, two days later, I discovered Magenta Pixie's video about the ruby portal. So I invite you to watch that as well if you haven't seen it already. Um, again, it may not be your cup of tea, but she has a different style of um, expressing the activations and downloads. So I'm gonna go into a little bit about this. So if you're not interested in any of this, maybe you wanna pause the video or stop the video um, because I'm gonna go into more depth about what I saw and what it represents to me, and then I'm gonna end on that note. So I'm gonna share the screen briefly um, and see what comes up. So I'm sharing the screen. And as I share the screen, I'm going into um, Oops, of course I lost my Ruby architecture. Ruby. And as I go into Ruby, I'm just going to, um, the reason I wanted to bring this up is it's part of the hexagonal crystal family. Now, when I see this activation, um, I also feel the need to bring up as above, so below. So I see this as what's going on, oh, Two, three weeks ago, I had been getting a, quite a bit of um, downloads about dolomite, and I wasn't quite understanding it. And as I got this information on dolomite, sapphire, emerald, ruby, they all had a uh, similar lattice system, which is hexagonal and trigonal. Um, from what I can understand. And for those of you who are crystal buffs, um, and you probably know more about this than I do, but what I am seeing is there is, um, it's a 12 point group. So of course I see this as 12 dimensions and everything has a, um, a connected meaning, so to speak. 
I see it as part of the six crystal families. And so it's a double crystal system. So it's two systems forming together from what I see. And of course, this and um, this shape you can check out on your own. But what I really found was that it is a rhombic prism unit cell with two equal axes. And I had kept getting downloads and information about axes and also um, perpendicular to the two base axes. Now this is basically leading me into not only what's going on in our bodies, okay, representative of what's going on in our bodies. So let me back up. The ruby can be um, seen as a representative of frequencies. So if you look up what a ruby represents, of course, from a crystalline frequency, it represents certain things. And that then, if you go in, so I got a little distracted here. Um, but essentially, if I look at this, and I look at the meaning, oh, it's, I have so many screens open, it's paused. So let me go into share screen a bit. So I'm on the site um, healingwithcrystals.net and the reason I want to bring this up is because there's many different layers and I'll do a separate video on this without getting into too much detail in this video. But I'm seeing a huge, um, a huge um, connection to everything. So we can look at it as far as I'm seeing that there's more to this. So corundum red spinels and chromium are huge in my periphery right now that are talking to me about bigger things. And so I'll do a video specifically on that. And of course the um, six pointed star and asterism is coming through huge. And ancient legend in Myanmar held that inserting a ruby into your flesh would make you invulnerable. I see this as quite um, representative of what's going on inside of our crystalline lattice structure and DNA. I also see this as representation, representative of what's going on in the field around us. Um, so we could say starting at the basics, and I'll break this down later. Right now I just want to go into... Um, Oh, uh, the Ruby programming. I also found it interesting that Ruby is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language. Isn't that interesting? Doesn't that remind you of light language or ancestral tones that are coming up? And it supports multiple programming paradigms. So I found that really fascinating. And the paradigm is multi paradigm, functional imperative, object oriented and reflective. So again, we can look at this as, um, as above, so below. So it's in everything. It's in our language. It's in our DNA. It's in our blood. Ruby is the color of blood, garnet. It represents certain things energetically, or um, it can re rep uh, represent divine sensuality, which reminds me of the divine marriage of the masculine and feminine. The sacral and root chakras, of course, have reference to Ruby as far as the energy around it. But then taking it a step further, those shapes, geometries, codes, um, sounds, colors, harmonics, and frequencies that are Ruby or mathematical dimensions that a ruby represents is also at play here. So there's a lot more to this. I'm just trying to keep it very simple. I'll go into more depth about the synchronicities that I was seeing regarding all of this. But what the matrix looked like to me around us, and we can call it a grid or a matrix or a system, of unitizing geometries and mathematical concurrencies, I'm in flow, this is just coming through, right? Looks like fascia. And that fascia is encompassing all of us. And what I saw it doing is it's essentially thinking, think of it as a womb. And this womb 
fascia is enveloping all of us for this energized frequency harmonic pattern. And it's sending out signals to the universe. So it's not only going on in our body, in our own fascia. Uh, I got a lot of messages and downloads about the gray matter in the brain, the crystals in the brain, the castle of gray skull has been coming up a lot for me. For those of you He-Man and She-Ra, <laughs> He-Man and She-Ra uh, watchers out there, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, so all of this was kind of coming through in this playful explanation of what's going on. And so this fascia is, is lighting up around us. And what I saw was it basically created a new fold of fabric that wasn't necessarily there before or accessible before. And through this new fascia of fabric that is encompassing us now, we are in the process of, um, I'm hearing rejuvenating, but I'm also hearing rejuvenating, like the jewels. We're sending out a frequency and it's communicating with source energy, the universe, the planets, and beyond in an instant instantaneous way um, is the only way that I can say it in the shortest and easiest um, expression. So think of a firing in the brain telling your body what's going on and you being aware of it. Um, that's already happening in our fascia. Our fascia is a web-like net um, that literally covers everything under our skin, right? Encompasses it all in a womb-like fabric that carries information to everything. And doctors and scientists still are figuring out what it does exactly, but that's essentially what it does. It's a carrier of information. It's a protective womb-like structure. It keeps things hydrated, it sends signals, it carries signals, and it, um, I, I've been guided to kind of share like bubble gum, chewing bubble gum when you pull it apart like taffy, it expands and it moves and it shifts and it grows with us. And that's essentially what this ruby-like structure is that I'm seeing around um, our, galaxy essentially around the earth in space attaching to all things or webbing out to eventually attach to all things so that's kind of what i was seeing um and it's a representation that we are creating this beautiful network that's linking up to everything or that we are expanding out in such a way that we are now creating a new expression or activating this dna frequency that is the stairway as above so below connecting us to our bigger expansion oneness source energy so there's a lot more where this came from but i just wanted to share um, that in essence uh these downloads that we're feeling this is where it's traveling through so again this is happening in mother earth and through the universe <sighs> So fun so much more where that came from so in love and light I'll do a part two of this video in more depth for those of you who like to nerd out um, and understand it really this was just a brief description of what I'm seeing feeling not really the depths of the shapes or the geometries um, which um, is perhaps coming all right namaste in love and light guys have fun exploring thank you